New York who's performed with Gotham at the comic strip. This is actually the first time stepping foot stage here in Hollywood. Everybody, start putting your hands together. Start making noise, Hollywood, for Jeffrey Gurry! tried this once without an audience, you fucking sucked. Anyway, let me get this out of the way right away. I know what you're thinking. The Phil Spector fucked Elton John. Which could actually happen, you know? People think it's funny if you know what you look like. If you really want to know what you look like, ask somebody else to describe you. But if you really want to know what you look like, ask a little kid to describe you. Trust me, you want to fucking kill yourself. I asked this little kid to describe me. He looked at me for a minute. He's like, if Phil Spector fucked Elton John. What can you do, right? Anyway, feels good to be back on stage again because I had gone back to my original job for a while, writing suicide notes for depressed people with writer's block. Yeah, then when I get bored, lately just for fun, I've been going into Chinese restaurants, I ask for the manager, and I complain that my fortune didn't come true. That goes over big, especially when I ask for a refund. Chinese people take that fortune shit very seriously. Now, Chinese is an interesting language, by the way. Not particularly sexy or romantic. Sometimes you'll hear a woman say they like a guy with a uh, Spanish accent, uh, an Italian accent, a French accent, maybe. You'll never hear a woman say, when I hear him speak to me in that Chinese accent, I can't control myself. I get moist in that Chinese accent. You know, I had a Chinese girlfriend for a while, and when she spoke to other Chinese people, it always sounded like she was yelling. I might take it easy, it's just Chinese. You don't have to get that excited about it. You no, know, uh, there's a language that could use some silent letters. When I was a kid, I had a friend whose name was all silent letters. Every time he didn't hear anything, he thought somebody was calling him. He spent his entire childhood running home to see what his mother wanted. So anyway, don't you hate it when you wake up in the morning and you're really in the mood to vote and there's no election? What do you do in a case like that? How do you take away that urge to cast a ballot? It's very confusing, right? It's like that night when you're supposed to turn your clocks ahead at an hour at 2 a.m. What if you're supposed to meet somebody at 2 a.m.? What time do you show up? At 1.59, you're still a minute early. One minute later, you're an hour late. Your friend's like, you're keeping me waiting an hour here. Even if you're right on time, you're an hour late. So anyway, pants are important. I got no material on that, I just thought I'd let you know. In case you were thinking of going out without any, pants are important. You see what else I have here? I, uh, I got a postcard today, and that was really weird. Is that still a relevant form of communication for 2011, a fucking postcard? You know, let's say I have a choice, I could send an email or a text message. I think I'll send a postcard. You know? When's the last time you got an important postcard? You never see a guy running home, you're like, where are you going? I just got this postcard from my girlfriend and I can't wait to read it. <laughs> well, fucking turn it over, man. It's all right there. It's not even in an envelope. I think that's why they never send government secrets on a postcard. You know, everyone read it. And postcards are mean anyway, you know? Most of the time, the only thing they say is, wish you were here. <laughs> if you wish I was here, the next time, fucking invite me. <laughs> Don't 
It's not the postcard, you know? I could do without it. So, uh, piercings are very big these days. Anybody here have any piercings that they will admit to? A lot of girls get piercings, you know? I can't really see if anyone raised their hand. But a lot of girls get piercings. A lot of girls get their tongue pierced. They say it increases the pleasure of oral sex for men. I don't know about you, but I never remember thinking, gee, that feels great. If only she had a metal ball in her tongue. <laughs> Something's missing, something metallic. Sharp, hot maybe, something uncomfortable. Because, personally, I'm afraid to increase the pleasure of oral sex. If it got any better, I'm liable to pass out and miss the whole thing. <laughs> From what I understand, the ending is the best part. <laughs> so, um, let me see, are there any men here from Europe? Anybody here from Europe? No, uh, well, listen, for the purposes of this joke, sir, would you mind being from Europe? Thank you, I appreciate that. What country are you from? Pardon me? France. Okay. It's amazing, you don't even have an accent. That's incredible. Well, I gotta tell you, you guys from France are fucking geniuses, really. That's amazing to me. Because I don't know how you did it, but somehow you managed to convince European women that it was cool to go to the beach topless and nobody would notice. What'd you do, promise not to look? An entire continent of men promised not to look, and European women bought it. They fucking bought it! Which is amazing to me, because in this country, if you see a girl with a hot body, you gotta take her out to dinner, you gotta wine and dine her, and maybe if you're lucky, she'll let you see it. In Europe, all you gotta do is invite them to the beach. So now when I meet a girl with a hot body, I invite them to Europe. It's expensive as shit, but I'm saving a fortune on dinners. Let me see what else I have you might hate. Uh, you know, people say that chivalry is dead. And by people, I basically mean women. Because you'll never hear a guy say that chivalry is dead. What would be the point, right? Now, chivalry started somewhere in the 1600s, and it seemed to have something to do with men throwing their coat in the mud for a woman to step on. I'm like, really? Who came up with that bright idea? Dry cleaners? How would that even work? What, were coats made of wood in those days? You throw your coat in the mud, it magically turns into a ramp? The chip just glides over the puddle? I mean, coats must have been very plentiful in those days. I think that's when the disposable coat business really kicked in in this country. Picture this scenario. It's the 1600s. You're walking with this chick. It starts to rain. You come up against the puddle. She starts looking at you. She's looking at your coat. You're like, hey, I just got this coat. It's a brand new coat. Call me a knave if thou wilt. Let me repeat that for you. Call me a knave if thou wilt. But I don't think I'm going to throw it in the mud. I got a better idea. Why don't I keep the coat and you walk around the fucking puddle? You selfish bitch. I gotta throw my coat in the mud to prove to some chick I'm polite? Any schmuck can throw his coat in the mud. Doesn't mean you're polite, it means you're a fucking moron who has no respect for his clothing. What if you do throw it in the mud? Then what do you do? You just leave it there? Play it off like you don't care? Oh, that old coat? I got millions of coats. Coats mean nothing to me. What if you were dating a few girls and it was a bad winter? Where are you supposed to get all those coats from? What if you're dating a girl and she knows you have a clean coat? You show up at a house that night and your coat's filthy. She's like, you fuck, have you been cheating on me? Because no guy throws his coat in the mud for another guy. Unless you're gay. And nobody was gay in those days. That didn't kick in until recently. Anyway, you guys have been wonderful. 